Hello, my friends. Jacob is here, and thank you for uh, pressing that little button and hanging out with me a little bit and spending some time with me. And thank you for all of you who subscribe and for all of you who comment and all of you who email me. I get so many, and I, I feel loved, and I want you to feel the love in return, and I try to get back to everybody. And if I haven't, I will try even harder. It's just... Uh, yeah, I got a life. I got a, I got four children, and I have a career, and um, you know, life isn't always easy. So I, I, it's hard to balance everything. But let's put all that out the window. I mean, it has something to do with what today's show is all about. But um, it has to do with the cares of the world. That's what we're going to get into today. Um, but really, I do want you to understand that if I don't get back to you, it's not because I choose not to, it's just because I haven't even found you yet or I haven't even seen your comment yet. Um, so needless to say, give me some time and keep commenting and I will indeed. Okay, so today, uh, maybe the title got you intrigued. Maybe you wanna know what Paul Thorne is. I, for years, had uh, I'd heard many, many things about what Paul's thorn is. Today, you are going to find out, and you will know without a shadow of a doubt that that is exactly what it is. And I'm not talking eyesight, or I'm not talking a bad leg, or I'm not talking some crazy girl that he was dating. I'm talking about Paul's thorn, the revelation of what it is, and how it relates to all of us, because this thorn is also our thorn. There's a reason that you hear the word thorn all over the scriptures. And listen, if you are not... Um, a Christian or you're not into um, the scriptures at all, it really doesn't matter because this is not about whether you are religious or not. This is just about one of those stories that we've all heard. We've all heard about Paul's thorn. And um, well, what was it? You know, what was it? And why did he pray so many times to get rid of it? And why did God allow it to stay there? That is a question that many of us have when we're going through suffering. Why am I suffering? Why am I going through this? Man, why won't all of this nonsense just end, right? I've been there. I'm there a lot. You know, just because Jacob's always so positive and uh, always talking about how we can, you know, change things by changing our mind because whatever a man believes and perceives becomes, it doesn't mean that I don't have my many dark nights where I'm up worried about, you know, what's to come or worried about what I'm going through, worried about my health or worried about my children or worried about just situations that are encompassing me or bad people that are saying mean things about me. I'm just kidding. I don't care about you all doing videos and crazy stuff. A nefarious, vile, wicked Satanist by the name of Jacob Israel. This guy's against the Bible. He has the Gospel of Thomas on his about page. What more do you have to see? I mean, honestly, what more do you have to see? If you see this video and still think, well, this guy, you know, I don't know, he sounds pretty nice and everything. Well, he might sound nice. You know, I could be like, I could sound too like, oh, yeah, everyone. Hey, you know, I could be too. But it doesn't, just because someone sounds nice and it has a nice voice doesn't mean that they're misleading you. He can post and, hey, look, it's a guy that was smiling and he, he sounds nice, but. Everybody is going to see what they want in everybody. It doesn't mean that it's necessarily there, you know? Um, you're going to get what you judge. So that's why we're told judge not lest you shall be judged, right? Um, if you think the worst in somebody, you're going to get the worst in somebody. And I have been, you know, I've had a habit of doing that myself, sadly. But today, it's, um, it's, more than just this little thorn, this thing that Paul was praying about. It's, it's more than finding out really what that is. It's about finding out how these adversities and these sufferings and these trials that come in our life are actually there to motivate us and they're actually there to make our lives better. So it doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter. I'm not here to tell you you need to see things my way. If you think that, you came to the wrong place. And anybody who tells me that I have to believe a certain way or I need to say things a certain way. I get that all the time. You're not saying this enough and you're not saying that enough and you say this too much and you say that too much. All I got to say is, listen, I'm here to share my heart and what I believe to be true and what I know innately is true and I'm here to share that with you. Um, so please do me a favor and just take it for what it's worth. I think there's great value in it. I was going to talk to you about the uh, NSA and how uh, Obama has just basically said, hey, you know what, just keep spying, you know, just let the, the reins go. Now, uh, you know, everybody is being spied on nonstop. I was going to talk about that. I 
I was even gonna talk about, you know, possibly some more Mandela effects. I had a, a great friend named Charlie who sent me this video of Rand Paul talking about how uh, the government spent almost a million dollars trying to figure out whether or not um, Neil Armstrong said, you know, one giant step for mankind, you know, that whole speech. Well, uh, turns out the, the government was working really, really hard to find out whether or not he said a man one small step for a man, or whether he said one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. I was going to talk about that too, because I thought, wow, that's interesting. But you know what they spent it on? They spent it studying Neil Armstrong's statement. Remember Neil Armstrong landed on the moon and he said one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind? Well, your government, in their infinite wisdom, wanted to know did he say one small step for man or one small step for a man? Your government spent $700,000 studying the preposition A. Did he say a man or just man? $700,000. But today in the midst of a, uh, you know, just a whirlwind of, uh, you know, adversity and things that come our way, I thought that I should talk about Paul Storm. So buckle up, people, because it's about to be revealed. All right, so in my last um, video about the Mandela effects in the scriptures, I talked about this because I had written a paper, which is why I'm talking about this today, Paul's Thorn, because, you know, people were, were interested about that, that essay. What was Paul's Thorn and, and uh, why did I write it? So in that essay, I had talked about a, uh, a passage that was in scripture that I had, you know, referenced in this article that was critical to the article that now just pff, it's no longer there. Um, if you haven't seen that video, check it out. But, you know, the main crux of this story the, uh, is it, still there. The message is still there. So basically, you know, uh, Paul was this dude. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this in a, in a way, like I said, it, this is not church, people. So th this is going to be me taking this wonderful story um, and kind of revealing what I believe to be the spiritual meaning behind it. Okay, so Paul was this dude, and he was like a religious dude, and he thought he knew it all, you know. And um, so as he was on his way to persecute people that he thought believed differently and that he thought were wrong because he was a Pharisee of a Pharisee, he was like the religious man of religious men. So while he was on his way with orders to basically persecute any of the Christians, on this way, he was knocked down, right? He was knocked down. He was put face first into the dirt by this bright light. Which he then said was Christ. But nobody else saw this, you know, which is there's a, there's a wonderful message in that as well. But it was this bright light. And when we think of light, what do we think of? Well, in the dark, you can't see anything, right? So when that light comes, all of a sudden, everything becomes clear. Now, this light was so bright that it basically blinded Paul. Yeah, that's right. He couldn't see after he saw it. But um, right when he was knocked down, he realized that his whole life basically had been a lie, that he had been putting his face into this nonsense religion, and he was actually doing the opposite of what God wanted him to do. He was actually doing the opposite of love. He was hating and he was hurting and, and he was doing this in the name of God. And there are a lot of people that do that today. That's why you find some people strapping bombs to their chests and you see other people calling me devil possessed online. You know, people are motivated by what they're motivated by. And whether that is love and that is peace and that is hope and that is truth or whether that is lies and that is fear and that is hate, it's all about what spirit you are receiving and, you know, sending out into the world. Well, Paul was sending out the wrong spirit, you know, but he had a desire to know the truth and that's why it came and it smacked him upside his head. Now, the irony is, um, and I'm going to reveal another thing here, too. This is cool because, you know, he, they, they had said that, you know, when he had received this sight, because he was blind for like three days, which is 
very symbolic of a trimester and birth, you know, how we, we come to this world and we're blind and then one day, poof, you know, the, uh, the dirt's removed from our eyes and we can see the truth. And I hope that every single one of you is going through that right now, this wake up phase, right? So um, he was blind and, and um, he was told to go to this prophet that was going to help him out. He was actually sent to a street called Straight. I mean, think about the symbolism there, people. You know, he was going the wrong way. He was, you know, knocked down off of his pride and he was smacked down into the dirt and he realized he knew nothing. And that was the symbolism of being blind. He couldn't see anything. He realized he knew nothing at all. So he was sent to learn. And he was guided and, and led like a child, which is what a lot of people need to be led by today. You know, you can't just tell people, I can't come here and tell you that there is more right away and throw a bunch of nonsense stuff at you or a bunch of revelation at you without you being ready to go. You know, I can't give you meat if you're only ready for milk. So in other words, Paul wasn't ready at this point to understand the truth, the mystery of this you know, wonderful kingdom that's in us all. The truth that we are more than we know. The truth that no matter what happens in life, it's going to be all right. So he was sent to this prophet. And um, after about three days, right, the scales fell away from his eyes and he could see again. And it was like he was a new man. Now those scales, in another book, um, there is a passage that says the scales of the Leviathan are his pride. Symbolic of the pride that Paul had, the pride of all these religious people thinking they know it all, right? Thinking their way is the only way, thinking their God is the only God and you have to believe or else. Those scales are blinding us all. And it isn't until those scales fall away, it isn't until that pride fell away that Paul could see. That's the same for all of us. So we're gonna cut down the road to where he's actually, you know, he thinks he's doing good. And, uh, and he was given all this revelation and he actually said this. He said, out of the abundance of revelation given to me, you know, God had sent a messenger of Satan. Now I know it doesn't say that in scripture anymore, it used to. But the bottom line is, a messenger of Satan was sent to buffet him, okay? Now, what that means is to kind of knock him down a notch because he knew so much and he was so connected to that source. You know, he was so connected to God that if he wasn't knocked down a peg or two, he wouldn't know that he needed to rely on that spirit that's in us all. So what is this thorn, right? He was given this thorn in the side and he prayed three times. The King James, it's thrice. I like that word, thrice. Um, but God said, my grace is sufficient. So there's a couple of ways to figure out what this thorn is. Um, I'm not going to bore you with the long, drawn-out story. Of it. I'm going to get right to it, okay? Just, you know, if, you, if you're using the Scriptures, the Scriptures will interpret the Scriptures, okay? There are uh, 66 books that have been canonized. I think that's irony, right? Uh, the number of man is six. The double-minded man would be six, six. And here you have the uh, double-minded man right there in the 66, you know, books of the uh, Scriptures, the Bible, if you will. But the bottom line is... Uh, I love the, the scriptures. I've, uh, I also love many other holy books, and um, I've written on many of them. Go to my website. If you don't believe me, you can check it out, and you can, I don't know, you know, do what you want with it. It's up to you. I don't really care. You know, I'm just here sharing. Uh, well, the bottom line is, so he had, this, he had this thorn, right? So there are passages that say that, you know, precept upon precept, line upon line, that, you know, that um, these things will be revealed to you. And you can't just go and you can't just look at it and say, I know what it is. Well, he had bad eyesight, right? Because he was blind and his eyes were, he had cataracts. That's what some people do. And some people say, right? They write books about it. Other people say, oh, well, he had a limp. And other people say, well, it was his uh, wife, and it was his ex-wife, and it was this, and it was that, and it was the, it was the, uh, the Pharisees, and everybody's pointing to all these things that they say the, the, the thorn was. But the scriptures say what the thorn is. There's this 
Jesus was given a crown of thorns. Why was it a crown of thorns? Think about that for a second. When Adam was cast out of the garden, uh, God said, no matter how hard you toil, right? You're going to be toiling with the earth and you're going to be trying to make it fruitful and you're going to be sweating. And you know what it's going to produce? A bunch of thorns. Thistles. Why do you see these thorns everywhere? Why is a thorn everywhere? What does a thorn represent? Okay. Well, sometimes you need the thorn, right, to get to the rose. Huh? Think about that. Okay. There's a great, a great passage where Jesus is talking about, you know, the kingdom of God. And um, there's, a, there's a great um, passage where he says, he, he's talking about the word of God. And he, he uh, says that it's the seed, you know, that a, um, a husbandman goes out into the field and he sows seed, okay? And some of it falls among good earth. Some of it falls among a stony place. Some of it falls among thorns, okay? And that, you know, that good earth, that he was talking about that seed, which he says he, he revealed is the word of God, is the truth. Your word, O oh Lord, is truth. So the truth is sowed out, right? Like I'm sharing with you. Now, some of you are uh, good earth. You know, some of you are going to take this and you're going to learn from it. You know, the, the moral of the story and finding out what Paul's thorn is doesn't really matter. What matters is how you can then apply it to your life and become more fruitful and multiply that truth and make it a beautiful world that we all want to live and see and, and, uh, and be in. So the disciples, well, they asked Jesus, they said, okay, well, um, you know, tell us what this means. You know, you're telling us this story, but what, what does it mean? Well, he says, the seed is the word of God, and the good earth are those that receive it, and, um, and it produces something wonderful in them. Some of it falls among thorns. Now, here is the kicker. He says thorns are, and a lot of you know this already, the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. Think about that for a second now. How awesome is that, right? Paul's struggling and he's got this thorn and Jesus just told you what the thorns are, right? No matter how hard you try, Adam, no matter how hard you try to make your life good, you're gonna still produce all these thorns. We're gonna have these struggles. And Paul, he prayed, come on, man, deliver me from these thorns. Like in my, the, the very essence of my being, my heart, my soul, I have this thorn. And it hurts. I want to be delivered from it. How many of you have uh, gone through terrible, terrible times and you just think you can't take it anymore, right? And you pray, God, deliver me from it. And he doesn't deliver you from it, you know? And you're not delivered. And you're struggling. And you're hurting. And you wonder, why am I going through all of this? And I've been there. I've been through a lot, people. You know, we all have a story. And we are the lead character of that story. But that thorn that Paul had, same thorn that we have, is the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, right? If I only had more money, my life would be better. That's deceit. That's the deceitfulness of riches. The cares of the world, I'm worried about this, I'm worried about that, I'm worried about my job, I'm worried about my kids, I'm worried about my friends, I'm worried about my family, I'm worried about everything. I'm worried about my health, I'm worried, will I ever grow another two inches? I'm worried about my, my hairline that's fading away, I'm worried about my belly line that's getting bigger. All of these worries, all these cares of the world that are strangling our joy, just like that passage where the, the truth was sown and it starts to grow, it starts to grow inside people. That truth that you are more and you can be all things and that with faith all things are possible and that you can have joy, peace, and hope. And I'm telling you this, and it goes right inside of you, but then what happens? Those cares of the world, those thorns, they start to strangle the truth. The cares of the world, I wanna let you know, they're all lies, okay? Another word for the cares of the world, sins of the world. Jesus took upon himself the sins of the world, right? There we go again, another picture. Another wonderful symbolic picture, the crown of thorns. A crown symbolizes an authority, a rule, and they actually pushed those thorns deep into his thinking, right? 
Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, was put to the place called Golgotha. He was put to death at the place called Golgotha, which is the place of the skull. People, there is this wonderful truth that is inside all of us, and it is waiting to be birthed. It's dormant, it's lying dormant, just like Christ lied dormant in the ground before he was res resurrected, right? So you've got this truth inside of you, and it's waiting, it's waiting, you know, to grow up so that you can be set free and you can know the life of power and purpose that you all are inherently meant to have and claim for yourself. Co-heirs, that's what we are. Joint heirs, co-creators. We're all one, we're all connected. And then, you know, these, these stories, these wonderful stories, um, these historical you know, retellings, if you will, of, um, of Paul and the disciples and Jesus and, and Moses and David and, and, and Jonah, all of them. It's our story. So when Paul prayed for that thorn to be gone, he was saying, well, what is this thorn, right? Just take it away, God said. Because we know now it's the cares of the world, the sins of the world, the seat most of the riches. God said, look, my grace is sufficient for you. Now, why would God say that? And what does grace cover? Grace covers a multitude of sin. A multitude of cares of the world and lies and deceit. A messenger of Satan was sent to buffet Paul. Satan is the father of all lies. Now, I know that some of you have a problem with me talking like this. So if you believe in a literal devil, great. If you don't believe in a literal devil, great. Doesn't matter to me. There is a lesson to be learned in this story, people. So listen. So in the story, Satan is the father of all lies. There's no truth in him. If there's no truth in something, it's not true, right? And whatever comes out of that something that has no truth is a lie. So a messenger of Satan would be delivering a message that is 100% a lie. That's the thorn, people. And that's what all of us are infected with today because this world is ruled by lies. I love it when I get comments from people and they talk about the, uh, the ruler of the air. The prince of the air, and that is the devil, right? And they say, the air waves. And I love that. Because how true is it? Because we're all being manipulated and controlled and lied to on a regular basis by everything that we see, everything we hear, right? From the TV, to the radio, to the newspaper, to your phone, to the internet, to YouTube. But the truth can set us free from that. So the question becomes, what do I do? When these thorns come and they strangle the truth that's within me already, what do I do? I pray, help me, get me out of here. But what do I do? You know that this grace is sufficient. You know that whatever you're going through is there for a reason. You know that no matter what, you're going to be okay. And better than okay. Because you are going to rearrange your thoughts and you are going to let faith work in you. Because with faith, all things are possible, right? You're going to believe and know that no matter what you're going through, something wonderful is going to come out of it. Now, I've been through a lot in my life. I've lost my home a couple of times. I've been lied about. I've been persecuted. I've been, oh, I've been sick many times. I've been left alone. I've been abandoned. I really would love to share some of the things that I've gone through with you, you know. And uh, my life is not free from, uh, from tribulation, if you will. It's not free from hard times. And I'm going through a hard time right now. But thankfully, the things that are important to me, like my family and my wife and my life and my, and my faith and my, my love for each and every one of you and my love for what I do, that's strong. So when the things come against you, you know, when that, uh, you know, when, when the winds of change and, and the storms of tribulation and the slings and arrows of uh, your enemies, you know, and those darts, those fiery darts, they, they send your way to try to hurt you and try to knock you down. Just remember, Jacob's lost everything and he got everything back. Jacob's been through heartache and he was rewarded 
with a full heart. And so will you, and so have you. I've been sick, and then I've been healthy. I've been lost, and I've been found. And each and every one of you have the same story, because we are all one people. Now, I know this was a little different, you know, and next week, I promise you, I will deliver some, you know, bizarre, awesome, really cool, super duper, you know, mind blowing revelation of a video for every one of you, you know, and I will reveal the truth, sure. But this week, for whatever reason, no matter how hard I looked, no matter how hard I tried to find something that was worthy of all of you, this is what I found. And I hope that it was enough. And I hope that you understand that when these cares of the world, because we all have them, when they come against you, right? And when you're given that crown of thorns, right? And it's pushed deep within you and you say, Father, why have you forsaken me? Because you think that God has turned his back on you because things are so hard now. Remember I said, it's just a lie. There is peace in truth. There will always be torment and fear and lies. So if you are broken up and you are hurting and you're worried and it's really messing with you, remember, it's a lie. Because only a lie can hurt you. But the truth sets you free. And I will see you all next week. I hope you do subscribe if you haven't already. Check the bell and all that jazz. And I love you. And don't let these thorns get you down. Can't pluck them all the time, but they will eventually come out. I love you all. And I will see you next week. Bye-bye.